everyone and welcome back. This is the second video of a series of videos we've developed here at MTI to provide you with a broad level overview on how to use our PBS 4100 balancing system. In this video, we'll spend time going over the MTI developed workflow that can be used by almost all users of both the rack mounted and portable balancing systems. Because the software included with your PBS unit has been designed around this workflow, you'll likely find it incredibly intuitive once you understand what we'll discuss in this video. We spend a lot of time and resources here at MTI to ensure that our hardware and software are as user-friendly as possible. Over the past 30 years, we've worked with a variety of industry sources, including technicians, user experience experts, and engineers to develop a workflow that allows users to get the most out of their PBS unit with a minimal amount of training. If you'd like a copy of the workflow we're going to review in this video, I placed a link in the description to where you can download it. I highly encourage you do this. If you have a PBS system, I also recommend that you print out a copy, laminate it, and store it with your PBS unit for future reference. This workflow can also be found in the user's guide that's included with your PBS. Let's start by looking at this workflow in its entirety. As you can see, it's made of a series of progressive steps that can take you through the process of both a vibration analysis and engine balance. However, for simplicity's sake, I tend to find it beneficial to break it down into two distinct workflows. To see how I do this, here's a line down the middle of the chart, demarcating the left side and the right side into two distinct procedures. The workflow on the left is used when completing a vibration analysis. The second workflow on the right side of the chart is used for balancing an engine. If you're using the PBS for preventative maintenance, such as progressive maintenance plans, you'll likely not have to use the balancing or right-hand side of the workflow too often. If you only use your PBS to address known bad engines, however, or if you use it with engines that have recently received work that could change its balance, you'll likely use the balance portion more often. Notice I've broken the process down into four steps, two steps on the left side of the chart and two steps on the right. These steps should always be done sequentially. Therefore, no matter what you plan to do with your PBS system, you will always start on the left side of the chart with step one and proceed through the process to steps two, three, and ultimately step four, moving from the left side to the right side of the chart. We start with step one of the process, which is focused on getting the system set up in the engine type and ID selected. As part of the setup, I recommend that users always ensure that their equipment is properly configured for the vibration analysis or balance that they intend to complete especially if they use their PBS for multiple different engine types. To help, we here at MTI can provide connection diagrams and Win PBS software configurations for the majority of applications. Some hot spot items we notice that cause a lot of frustration are charge amplifiers whose gains have not been properly set in accordance with the settings in the Win PBS software, accelerometers that do not match what the system was originally set up for, and the all-time top dog problem, damage to cables. Take time to properly ensure your cables are in good working order before starting. This could save you a lot of troubleshooting and frustration later in the process. Next, you'll tell the PBS software what type of engine you're working on as well as provide the engine's unique identification number. Users typically use the engine's serial number for this ID. Once we have the unit set up, running, and the engine's identification information into the system, we're ready to move to step two, completing a vibration survey. This will provide the baseline reading for the engine that we can use to make decisions about how to proceed. Don't worry about absorbing all of the information during the baseline run. The PBS system will save all of the run's data so we can review the data after the fact if required. Once we've completed the baseline run, we face our first decision point in the workflow. Are the vibrations we saw unacceptable? Obviously, if vibrations exceed a manufacturer limitation, they're not acceptable. However, the decision of whether a vibration is acceptable or not can be decided by other factors besides magnitudes. 
If you decide that the engine vibrations are acceptable, then you're done and you can exit the workflow. You do not need to proceed to the right-hand side of the workflow to complete steps three and four in this case. You can save any remaining data that you've not saved already and exit the program and disconnect the aircraft. If there are unacceptable vibrations, however, we need to proceed to the right-hand side of the workflow and address the engine balance portion of the problem. We're now at step three, figuring out why the vibrations are unacceptable and if the engine can be balanced. Knowing what can or cannot be balanced is the subject of another video and additional training. Suffice it to say, if an engine has unsatisfactory vibrations and it is determined that it's not a good candidate for balancing, it's more than likely that faulty components are going to have to be sent out for repair or overhaul. At this point, the workflow is over and the user can disconnect the aircraft. If an engine is a good candidate for balancing, however, we can proceed with the fourth and final step of the process, balancing the engine. At this point in the process, we can open up the PBS system's balance wizard, which will lead us through the balance process into the final part of step four, the final vibration survey, or the check run. If vibration levels are acceptable at the end of the final vibration survey, the user has completed the workflow and can disconnect the aircraft. If the user is still not satisfied with the balance results, however, they can return to the top of the right side of the workflow and restart the engine balance procedure. I encourage operators to use this two-part, four-step workflow when using their PBS. By using it, it minimizes the chance that users will miss important details or get lost in the process. Furthermore, you'll find that the WinPBS software included with your PBS system, including the balance wizard, is designed to accommodate this workflow, guiding you through the process seamlessly.